Hello, welcome to this session that we have today to uh, look ahead towards the, the oncoming fire season and to have a look at some learnings that we had to take away from the West Meadows grass fire. With me today to discuss these is uh, Operations Officer James Dard from the CFA District 14. Welcome aboard, James. Thanks, Quinny. Uh, always good to come and have a chat with you. Good, James. We'll take the opportunity today to um, to go through the learnings of the, of the um, West Meadows fire, but we should also discuss the um, Fire Commission's con strategic control priorities. Absolutely, key points. All right, the first one is primacy of life, the safety of the, our responding crews and the, the community at large. All right, that's always going to be number one. Absolutely. The, uh, the uh, second part is the warnings and advice to community uh, needing to be relevant, uh, timely and tailored to suit uh, the situation at hand to get them out as quick as possible. Absolutely. All right, other control priorities are the protection of, of infrastructure, uh, vital to the community, residential properties, also community assets and the, the environment. environment. Yeah. All those um, strategic control priorities are on the Fire Service Commissioner's website. Absolutely, yeah. All right, James, we'll take the opportunity now to discuss some of the learnings from the West Meadows fire. One of the first things to come out of that was to consider establish an incident control point, location control. How does the CFA do that? It's a key point for, for CFA and you know, it's difficult when you turn up and it's dusty and, and smoky and hot uh, to find that best spot, but to have a uh, conversation with other agencies when you're there, uh, have a, a point that's of advantage and so, recognisable. So first responding crews, yes. identify it, yep. communicate it, and other agencies attend it. Absolutely, right. well identified so that you can get the other agencies. Really in. important for our crews to yes. know where that is. As far as the incident con management team goes, really important now to get someone from the other agency in as part of your incident management team structure. Yes, look, I think we've had liaison officers in the past, but uh, to put that person who's, who comes from the other agency as a deputy incident controller uh, gets a collaborative effort. Uh, for management. So to stress again for our first responding crews establish that our commanders or ops officers will come on scene, yes. we'll get the intel, the information about it, right. be able to uh, plan from yes. there. Yes. W with regard to that, communications plans. Yes, early, get the, get the communications in place early. Uh, we've got some pre-established pre comms plans. Yep. Uh, we should know about them before we get to the job. MFB uses a fire ground channel, the CFA uses a... Yes, we go from uh, dispatch channel onto the fire ground channel uh, and we have multiples of those. Alright, so for incidents on that interface it's important to find out what channel we're using, yes. in what sector and that's communicated to the incident control team through to the sector. So Everybody should know about it. One of the uh, Learnings from the West Meadow fire was uh, establishing or instigating safety officers. Now, yes. we know MFB, we're quite good at establishing the safety officer at the static structure fires or incidents. How does the CFA manage that on a dynamic running grass fire? Look, again, there's complexities that need to be considered and, and safety is an area that can be uh, farmed off, I guess, to a safety officer. Yeah. Uh, need to be in contact with the crews maybe even have established safety officers in sectors. All right, so the safety officers in the sectors yeah. and also... Information back to the incident controller. A safety officer at the incident control yeah, point. Yeah, so that would be the person who would then inform the, the incident controller. So not only just looking for the physical hazards, but also the welfare of the crews. You know, hot summer, Absolutely. smoky, yep. uh, well heavy fed. gear that they're wearing. So to be another set of all other sets of eyes for the incident controller Absolutely. on the fire ground. Utilisation of existing plans. The yes. MFB has grass, uh, has parkland technical response plans. They're on the intranet under the bushfire tab. They should also be on all appliances at stations at the interface. CFA have similar plans? Yes, uh, we've got bushfire response plans for municipalities. Contained within them would be specific plans for the likes of a Plenty Gorge or, or Woodlands Park. So this time of year, it's vital to pull those plans out. Have them out, reviewed, talk dust, about them. Dust them off? Absolutely. Head down to the other station, the MFB station, and, and chat, chat or invite people back to your station. What chat. a great opportunity for both agencies yes. to, to uh, glean that information yes. that they hold, share it, and have it have it there at the ready to be used at once at, you're responding at such yeah. incidents all right um, another learning from the fire was our public information we early discussed uh, it's one of the fire commissioners control priorities clearly we want to keep the community informed yep 
Uh, for MFB first responding officers and command staff, we were able to get that information out through a one source, one message or emergency alert, and that is accessed via VK8 for the, uh, via the ECC manager. Uh, Similarly with us, uh, incident controller through VIC-5 to the RDO, uh, the key is to have a really good picture for the, the, the makes for the community to know. Yes. and that, that relevant information in a timely fashion. Entailed. That information goes on both websites That's right. and is shared, which is vitally important for the people living on yes. that inter interface. Look it up. Finally, evacuations. It's important to remember that the incident controller is responsible for the decision to evacuate. If it's time critical, this, this decision should be made immediately. Sure, you've got the resources there, or get more if you need them. And where possible. This decision should be made in consultation with the EMT. Police are responsible for managing the evacuation. There's a five-step process there to go um, to happen. But you're right, information from the EMT before you make that decision to evacuate or shelter in place yeah, is that's, vital. That's right. All right. That information that we've shared today, the West Meadows uh, review, operational review, is on the Fire Service Commission website. And also, all of the information uh, that we've discussed today is on under the um, fire agency bushfire. Available online, carries really good information throughout. Fantastic. James, all I can say is great to see you again. Thanks for your time today. No worries, Brad. Uh, long season ahead, so uh, let's everyone stay safe. And, and that's got to be our message. Stay safe, have a Merry Christmas everyone, and we'll see you out there in the dust and smoke. Thanks, Brad. <laughs>